Good morning and welcome to the 2021 college football playoff semifinal at the 86 Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. It's our Wednesday media availability with the number four Cincinnati Bearcats. Joining us today will be defensive lineman Curtis Brooks, safety Brian Cook, wide receiver Trey Tucker, and tight end Josh Wiley. As a reminder, please use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. When called on, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Curtis, good morning. If you would, provide us with the opening statement on your excitement about being in the college football playoff before we open the floor for questions. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we're extremely excited just for the opportunity to be here. Uh, got a chance to play on a huge stage for a national championship. This is everything we all wanted and worked for. We just wanted the opportunity to play for championships. So let's get it going. Our first question comes from Michael Mursky. Uh, hey, Curtis, uh, Michael Marski from The Next Network. First of all, congratulations on the success that you've had this year as well as the success uh, that your team has had going into the college football playoffs. Um, as an all AAC first team uh, member, is there an added pressure on you to perform every game, especially against the number one team in the country? Oh, man, um, I wouldn't say pressure, man. It's just more of an opportunity just to go play. You know, I've been uh, in Cincinnati for quite a few years, so – I don't really know if I feel too much pressure, but I just love the opportunity to go out, go out there and just compete every every game I get. The next question comes from Justin Williams. Hey, Curtis. Uh, yesterday they asked Coach Tressel about um, if there's any kind of unheralded guys on the defense. You know, a lot of talk about Sauce and Kobe and things like that. And, you know, he said he kind of felt like that was the case up and down the, the depth chart on the defense, but he specifically mentioned you. Do you feel kind of like an unheralded, you know, overlooked guy? Does the defense as in general feel like that, do you think? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know if I can really speak on, like, if I'm, uh, you know, on that situation, but I know out there on the field, we all play as one and we're together. So that off the field attention, I'm happy for anybody who gets here. If, I, if, I, if it don't come, that's okay. Our next question comes from Ivan Mazel. Hi, Curtis. Uh, you guys have come a long way over the time of, since you got to UC. How do you keep in perspective this moment and not let it get too big for you? Oh, man, you just uh, pre prepare like it's any other uh, week. You know, keep the same routine. Coach Fick is always preaching a uh, routine and sticking to what you're doing, and that's just exactly what we want to do. Even though like we're on a huge stage, a huge opportunity, we still want to keep the same routine just to keep it going the same way. Do you, do you think that, uh, that, what do you anticipate those early moments being, you know, playing at Jerry World and coming out onto that surface with that many people there? What do you, what do you anticipate that feeling like? Breathtaking, I'm, I'm sure it will be. But as soon as the ball will go down, I'm sure all the butterflies and stuff will go away. But I know as soon as the first run out, the first glance at the crowd, it'll be something spectacular. Thank you. Our next question comes from Michael Casagrande. Yeah, you came from Virginia. Uh, when you moved to Cincinnati, what was your first impression of the chili in Cincinnati? Um, 
I first came to Cincinnati, I was not a huge fan of the uh, Chili, especially the Skyline. But I got some great, you know, uh, friends from Cincinnati, Malik Van, Darren Beavis, kind of sat me down and forced me to eat it one more time, and I'm actually a huge fan of it now. Crazy. What do you? What's your your message to people who, who the haters of Skyline Chili who uh, don't think it looks good? Don't try. You can't just try it one time. You gotta go back and try it again. Have to. Thank you. The next question comes from Bobby Nightingale. Hey, Curtis. Um, just wanted to ask, kind of last January, what was it like when a lot of the guys, yourself, Kobe, guys that decided to come back for another season, um, kind of the feeling, like Marcus, too, um, yeah, just do you kind of remember what was going, kind of going through your head, kind of the expectations for this year when a lot of guys decided to come back? Oh, man, well, uh, what's funny is none of us actually discussed what we were going to do. Uh, you know, as far as coming back, it just all kind of happened. Then once we realized, you know, we looked around and realized who was back, we realized we could really do something special this year. And it played out, you know, in that way, in a way. Next question comes from Jeremy Rouch. Hey, Curtis, uh, Jeremy Rouch, Fox 19, Cincinnati. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, you know, kind of piggybacking on that last question. You are a 60 year guy and you obviously aren't the only one. You've seen a full program turnaround, Curtis. What has it been like experiencing that and how much have you kind of been able to realize what this week means knowing where you came from almost six years ago? Oh man, I still remember the feeling of the first time getting in Cincinnati, the first time being on campus, how practice used to feel how, and then you know how practice has changed now. But. Uh, as far as uh, seeing the program uh, turn around, man, it's been something spectacular. Coach Fig, he's really a, a, I don't know, in a way, a legendary coach in my eyes because he's brought he's brought so much success to not just the team but to individual players, everyone. So, so with that being said, it's just he just helped the uh, whole program, everyone win it. So the turnaround was huge. Next question comes from Chad Brendel. Hey, Curtis, Chad Brendo, Bearcat Journal. Um, just, just take me through what was it in the middle of the season that really saw your play uh, take a step up and, and be able to make the impact up the middle that, that you have from what probably the Notre Dame game, Indiana Notre Dame game on? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's just preparation. You know, a lot of work, a lot of hours. We just go out there and go play. I really try not to worry about stats too much. Uh, when I'm playing the game, you just go play, just go have fun, and usually things take care of uh, Things like that just take care of itself, and they did. Our next question comes from Keith Jenkins. Curtis, you mentioned how practice used to feel and then how it feels now. What's the difference between then and now, do you think? Oh, man. Uh, I, I just remember being as a freshman and I could walk out there, you know, Maybe my shoes weren't tied up all the way. Maybe my ankles weren't taped, you know, past my, I know I've been strapped up all the way. Can't do that now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's intense out there. Every practice, even on a, a Thursday walkthrough, it's, it's a mental focus, you know, that we have to have. And I, I really feel like that, and along with the weight training, really, like, helped the program turn around, in my opinion. Next question comes from Jeff Spiegel. Hey, Curtis, Jeff Spiegel, WBMA Birmingham. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, all the seniors on this team. Is there like a, a sense on this team that, you know, that it's it's kind of now or never for Cincinnati, that you really need to take advantage of this moment and uh, and try to finish this thing? And how big would it be to not only, you know, beat the number one team in America, but to just finish this thing and win a national title? Um. Well, first off, for the seniors, it's definitely not never because it's our last chance. But as far as Cincinnati, I don't believe this is the last time Cincinnati will be on a stage like this. Uh, the program's headed in the right way in all directions, you know, in my opinion. So I really believe Cincinnati's going to become a household name, one of those top 10 programs that Coach Fick uh, preaches about all the time. I definitely think that's uh, possible. Oh, and knocking off uh, Alabama. Oh, man, talk about a dream come true. You know, as a kid uh, watching football, Alabama, Alabama, Nick Saban, that's who that's who's on TV all the time. Now do we get the opportunity to go play them. It's everything you ask for as a football player. Thanks. This question comes from Callum Squires. 
Hi, Curtis. Thanks for taking the time. Obviously, with going up against Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young, that's a huge challenge for you guys to try and contain him and put pressure on him. What have you seen on film that makes you think that's something you guys as a D-line can really accomplish uh, on Friday? Oh, man. Well, first off, uh, Alabama's uh, offensive line, you, the first thing that pops out when you uh, watch the film is that they're coached up great, you know, tight hands, quick sets. Uh, all across the line, so that's the first thing I noticed right away. Uh, but you know, it's definitely going to we're going definitely going to get our opportunities to uh, go rush and get after him. Uh, Bryce Young, Heisman, he's he wanted for a reason, really uh, the best in the country. That's what the Heisman you know means and stuff like that. So definitely, we're just looking forward to the option to go out there and play. Thank you. Good luck. The next question comes from Justin Williams. Curtis, you talked about that you know decision to come back for. For you, for a sixth year, have you had any guys maybe seek out advice about if they should use that extra year for them moving forward? For sure, and I tell them all the same thing, man. It's a it's a risk and reward to everything. So if you come back, make sure you know you you honing in on your craft, focusing, and just don't come back. You know, just to I don't know if you know what I'm saying. I don't know. Don't come back just to do it. Come back with a purpose, I guess. Right. This question comes from Michael Casagrande. I did, sorry, I didn't have an, another question. All right. Next question comes from Chad Brendel. Curtis, take me through that moment. You're at the senior banquet. You've got the, the college football playoff show on. I know everybody kind of knew the way that things played out on Saturday that you guys were in, but what goes through your mind when that, that Paul pops up and you see you know, that Cincinnati's in the college football playoff and you get that reward for coming back and working as hard as you have? Uh, you know, you really uh, see your hard work unfold and, you know, right in that moment. In that moment, I had my mom and my dad with me with all of the uh, seniors in the banquet. It was just, you know, how you, you draw it up in your head in the, uh, the picture perfect frame. That was, it was exactly how I dreamed of. And our final question comes from Michael Mursky. Hey, Curtis, uh, what's been the difference between preparing for this playoff game comparing to the bowl games you've played in the past? Oh, man. Uh, well, that goes back to the routine thing I was uh, just speaking on. Coach Fick prepares the same for everyone. Of course, there's a little bit more uh, moxie there because we're playing, you know, for uh, we got an opportunity to play for a national championship. But basically, it's really just, just the same preparation, the same work, the same schedule, stuff like that. Thank you. Curtis, thank you very much. Best of luck on Friday. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys.